Woke up this morning and I don't have a thermometer in my house, but I definitely feel like I'm slightly feverish. I think it's honestly just from burning the candle at both ends. And uh, I started feeling it yesterday doing an open and close shift at the GNC that I manage, which is completely short staffed. So, anyway, I woke up contemplating not going to this shoot, but with my schedule, I gotta take shoots when I can. Hopefully, get in a couple more of those. So, we're gonna head up to New Hampshire now to meet up with Michael Thomas. I treat photo shoots just like I treat my competitions. Today is Thursday morning, the day of the shoot, and my last day of weight training was Tuesday to let my muscles recover and rest for a full day. On top of that, I'm very carbohydrate sensitive, so the last few days I've been very low carbs to let myself really flatten out. That way when I go to refeed, as in fill myself up with high carbs, I fill out and I look nice and tight and hard like right now. So yesterday I began adding carbs in a little bit and then today is very high carb day. You guys can see I'm filling out, I'm tight and I'm full and I'm hard again. Ready for the shoot. <clears throat> okay, so breakfast time. I like having whole foods before a photo shoot. I just feel like the whole foods digest a little bit slower and keep me full longer. And for me it's all about being full because like I've said I'm very sensitive to carbohydrates in the sense that even if I go on a moderately light carb diet, like enough carbs where most people would still be able to stay full off of it, I will flatten out. Eating just sweet potatoes will flatten me out. Um, I need a good amount of carbs to actually stay full. Enough carbs to the point where most people would probably spill over from it. So this morning I'm doing a full sized uh, white potato with 8 ounces of steak, lean steak, and then uh, some greens of course for fiber. And then I'm also going to have maybe two scoops of peanut butter with it because the fats will actually help store the glycogen and keep the fullness longer. That's why you see competitors eating like peanut butter with their rice cakes and honey before stage. And speaking of honey, it's like nature's nitric oxide. Drink this for the shoot, the sugar in it, everything's so fast acting, you get the veins coming out. I love it. I packed one meal for later on, chicken breast, brown rice, but this should honestly do the trick for a while. So, oh, and like I said in the past, a carbohydrate is a carbohydrate as far as fat loss goes, and I'm not contradicting myself now. Um, I could, by all means, use some junk source of carb right now, and when it comes time to do the competition, I'll still be just as shredded as I would be by eating this. However, at the moment, different carbs are going to cause your body to respond differently. You know, some carbs will keep you fuller than others, some carbs will keep you fuller longer than others. We all know that. So, they are different. They're just the same when it comes to overall fat loss. Um, kind of like the same sense as if your boss has ever told you, you know, he doesn't care how the job gets done, just get it done. One person will get the job done really organized and efficiently. The other person will be like a bull in a china shop and be real uh, scattered with it. But the job gets done the same way no matter what. It's kind of how carbohydrates work. We're using the more efficient worker for this photo shoot here to make sure I stay full, veiny, good to go. Also got some Advil for my fever. Stocked up on water bottles too. Photo shoots are a lot of traveling. As soon as I got to New Hampshire, we jumped in his car and we hit all the different locations. It's a lot of packing and unpacking if it's not a studio shoot, so be ready for that. Be prepared. You will hit some of the most beautiful locations at these photo shoots. Again, make sure you're prepared and treat them just like a competition if you're doing a fitness shoot. You can see I'm obviously pumping up, got to get the muscles ready for the photos. Want to get them nice, lively, the veins out, just like you would backstage at a competition. Some of the most creative locations can make some of the best photos. For instance, this dam, which kind of looks graffitied and ghetto we'll end up coming out with some really, really nice photos. Again, it's all a matter of how good a quality your photographer is, so make sure you're shooting with the right guy. Remember, photography, just like in anything you do, also adds up like a resume. If big name photographers see you working with good quality photographers and your shots come out great, well then obviously they're going to want to hire you. If they see that you're working with lower line photographers and not really going out there to get the quality shots you need for your portfolio, well that's how they're going to look at you and they're not going to see you as qualified to work with them. So you'll never be able to move up the ladder. You have to look at everything you do just like you would a job in building a resume. So be ready for some oddball positions 
it's going to be real uncomfortable. In fact, doing a photo shoot is almost harder in a lot of respects than doing a competition. You have to lean in some awkward positions. The photographer is going to be pointing out to you what he wants to fix, trying to adjust your hips, your legs, your shoulders, something to make the shot just right. When you're doing outdoor shoots as opposed to photo shoots, you're going to be hitting some wild locations too. As you can see, we're more or less mountain climbing down here. And yes, there actually was a big old, uh, big old array of people watching. We had a little crowd going on of college kids, so they were admiring. <laughs> you just got to make the best out of it. I mean, you're at a photo shoot in a weird location. I mean, a spot you're never going to be back in, seeing a bunch of people you're never going to see again. And you know that they're admiring your physique as it is, so... Just try to make the best out of it. I do know that uh, being in public and being half naked doing photo shoots can be a weird feeling, but if anything, just lie and tell them it's for Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> so, I guess the biggest fundamentals, see, you can see right there. Never judge your location. Always trust a photographer. You can make a weird shot come out really good. Remember, when, you, when you're on a photo shoot, you're going to have to change into a bunch of different clothing. The photographer will give you a list of clothes to bring. Bring them, guys. Do not just wing it and grab whatever you have. If the photographer gives you a list, show up with that list of clothes. It's honestly like getting a new job, getting told the dress code, and then showing up out of dress code. And then be ready to change in weird on-the-go locations. you got to do it quick, and you got to do it in random spots. So don't be, uh, you know, it, it, you don't have any shame to your game. you got to bring a towel and change the towel, and that's what you got to do. And be ready for a lot of sh setting up and a lot of testing. There's Michael Thomas and I. Again, one of the best photographers to work with. He's right on the East Coast. Um, I strongly recommend him. You can find him on uh, modelmayhem.com. You can find him on Nick Wright Bodybuilding. Good buddy of mine. <laughs>